lessons online. Okay, I'm going to be moving back over to your uh, geography, okay, team 3.1. Uh, recently, we've been covering a bit of Team 3.2, okay, looking at sustainable urban development. Right, but it's time we, we dial back into your Team 3.1, okay, and finish it up, okay, because I've already done most of it, like your alternative energy sources, um, as well as nuclear nuclear energy, hydropower, um, all those stuff that is at the later part of your Team 3.1. Okay, but I'm going to move on to the front part of your syllabus document as well, which is going to be looking at climate change. Okay, so climate change, we've already... And we've actually gone through a bit, okay, in your physical job. Um just uh we just touched base a bit, okay, based based um in your Pleistocene and Holocene um part of that syllabus. I mean of of the syllabus, okay, but we're gonna be looking more at the actual science and how does climate change actually affect sustainable development in this team of 3.1, which is on sustainable development. Okay, so this video we're gonna be looking at the science of climate change. We're gonna be looking more at specifically the evidence that surrounds it, that's that surrounds the fact that climate change does exist. Okay, so the definition of climate change for those of you guys who aren't aware first, okay, it is a change in global or regional climate patterns. Okay, so when your climate, okay, which remember is the long term, whether it's always the short term, okay, when your climate in the long run actually changes, okay, it is basically um what the definition of climate change is, like when climate changes, right? It makes very, very basic common sense. Okay. But um usually the definition goes on, okay, to say that in particular a change apparent from the mid to late twentieth century, okay, when it was first coined by IPCC last time. Okay, onwards and attributed largely to the increased levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide produced by the use of fossil fuels. Okay, so nowadays we all know that fossil fuels and your greenhouse gases, right, they are the um I mean your fossil fuels are basically the biggest reason why um, carbon dioxide is so rapid in today's society, right? Because it contributes to increased greenhouse gases, which cause your ozone layer to, to um, to weaken, to to actually um result in this increase in global temperatures, which causes this change in climate. So when we look at the evidence of climate change, okay, we're looking at a few evidences that show that over time this climate has actually changed. Okay, so the first evidence, um, we're going to be looking at oceans and lakes. So those are a source that we can actually see that climate has changed over time. The other source would be through your ice core, okay, which is um, over here you can see that I've broken it down okay, into your isotopic records and, and um, uh, greenhouse gases for ice core. And for your evidence from ocean and lakes, we have got isotopic records um, for minifera and pollen grains. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of them specifically. So, evidence from ocean and lakes. Okay, basically during the Ice Age, what happened is that water was constantly evaporating from the oceans, okay, and then it will then condensate, okay, on land in the form of snow and ice. Okay, so during your interglacial period, which is basically when the warmer periods come back, okay, um, what happened is that your water would return to the oceans as rivers because the water on all your land has actually melted. Okay, so that is basically what we're looking at. Okay, that is why because of this phenomenon of um, heating and cooling, melting and freezing, that would basically cause certain things to develop, such as the first thing, which is your isotopic records. Okay, so isotopic records, basically what they are is um, what is the percentage of oxygen, okay, or the percentage of certain isotopes and molecules that exist in the ocean during a certain period of time as compared to when they exist um in another period of time. Okay, so when you compare the two periods of time and you compare the difference in the amount of isotopes or the difference in the kind of isotopes, you will realize that then um, there will be a difference okay, in, in the weather climate or the climate at that point in time. Okay, so during glacial times, water molecules are basically removed from the ocean by evaporation, okay, um, and they are not returned okay, via condensation and rainfall. So the remaining ocean water slowly becomes depleted in molecules with the lighter isotopes. Okay, so these would later then be, um, it, it would basically, what happens is that it will now be concentrated with heavier isotopes in the ocean. Okay, because the reason being is that your, light, your lighter isotopes um, actually melt faster. Okay, so when your, light, your, your lighter isotopes melt uh, and leave the ocean faster, okay, essentially what happens is that um, you, your ocean will just be left with the heavier molecules. Okay, over here I made a mistake. Okay, it shouldn't be during your glacial times. Okay, it should be your interglacial. Okay, because glacial basically means that it's during the period of your basically your ice age, like the cold period. Okay, what happens in this case is only during hot periods. Okay, your water molecules um, are removed from oceans via uh, 
um, evaporation. Okay. So, um, okay, basically, so, so to basically sum this up is that after that, during the next period of your glacial period, okay, whereby, um, uh, um, when there is actually um, condensation, okay, when there is cooling once again, okay, then your lighter isotopes will then settle as well, okay, and that one will look at ice core to actually determine um, what the difference in the isotopic records will be. Okay, next one we have is for Minifera. Okay, this one I, do, I would say is a stronger piece of evidence as compared to the ocean one because um, for isotopic records, you need to keep on monitoring. Okay, for for Minifera, it's very, very clear. So basically, for Minifera re- refers to tiny organisms. Okay, they're basically called zooplanktons. Okay, um, and they basically construct shells. Okay, that are made out of certain chemical compositions which is affected by the ocean's water. Okay, so whatever that type of, um, whatever based on whatever climate it is in, okay, these four mini fair weapons says that um, they would actually start to die off, okay, the shells would drop off, okay, and then this will accumulate as ocean sediment. So when you pick up this ocean sediment during different climatic periods, you can test it out, okay, to see exactly what the different chemical composition is, as well as what is the percentage of whatever isotopes that are present, and that would help you to determine whether during that period, okay, by the fall, mini were there, whether it was a period of hotter, a hotter season or it was a colder season. Okay, so these provide a record of these organisms that go back in time, analysis of the isotopic composition, okay, like I said, okay, of the calcium carbonate in the shells would show that the, the chemistry of the ocean would, would change over time. Okay, so what you're looking at, okay, for fall, mini is basically there are these organisms which drop these shells, okay, and these shells have a certain chemical composition, okay, which is greatly affected by calcium carbonate or either that any sort of other um, possible isotope, okay, that you don't have to know, you can just name isotopes, okay, that is found in the ocean. So when you pick this up and you go and test it and you see that, oh, during this month or during this year, okay, the, the fora minifera only had a certain amount as compared to another amount in another different period, okay, or another um, glacial period, for instance, you would see that there was a difference from there. You can see the difference in the amount of isotopes and hence the difference in temperature, which is all done through science. Okay, so these are all very sciencey things. You don't really have to know the full science behind it, but just know that the chemical composition, okay, the difference in isotopes would help to show what the difference in um, climate was during the two different periods. Okay, so this is just a little picture, okay, of roughly how they look like. You don't really have to know. It's basically like, they look like cells, la, essentially. Okay, the last evidence would be pollen grains. So pollen grains okay, occurs when lake sediments, so we're looking at lakes now, not oceans. Okay, lakes may actually um, contain okay, all these pollens okay, because of the um, of these pollens being deposited okay, by any sort of vegetation that's around the area. Okay, so they are extremely resistant to decay from one plant type to another and the cause of sediment from lakes are able to show how or what kind of vegetation was actually um, available in, in that during that period. Okay, so when let's say it's a dry period, okay, and, um, or let's say it's a wet period, okay, and there's a lot of pollen grains that are being swept into the lake. Okay, when you actually take out these lake sediments and you find you start to study all these pollen grains, you realize that some of them were maybe from vegetation that were yards away, KMs, kilometers away, and then you'll be like, oh, but how did they actually get into this lake? So that means that there has to be some sort of climate that has changed, okay, either that through some sort of flooding, through evaporation, condensation, through water melting on land and then remelt and then um and not remelting, sorry, and then water setting on land, condensing on land and then melting after that and then going to the different lakes with all these pollen grains. Okay, that will help you to determine what kind of climatic conditions were in the past. Okay, then we now we look at ice core. Okay, so what exactly is an ice core? So an ice core is basically um is kind of like a huge, very very thick um ice cube. Okay, think of it that way. It's like an ice cube, right? So they accumulate um basically snow that accumulates at high elevations and does not melt. Okay, will later be buried by more snowfall and be compressed as ice. Okay, so snow that is super 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 cold and it starts to become frozen. Okay, like. Um, ice, okay, they will basically start to pile up onto each other and it forms this very, very thick layer of ice and this is known as ice sheets. Okay, so from ice sheets, then you can extract a core. So it looks something like this. Let's say this ice sheet, you can basically extract a core. This is basically what the core looks like. Okay, so the first one, isotopic composition, can show us that climate change has actually indeed occurred. So the isotopic composition of ice core can show that temperature was actually colder okay, if there is a higher ratio of O16 to O18 molecules or isotopes. Okay, so during glacial periods, water molecules of O16 will be evaporated and com- 
condense and later fall as snow to be compressed into an ice cap. Okay. On the other hand, the extraction of ice core and testing of chemical composition would show the variation in ratio of 0, 0, 0.16 to 0, 0.18. Okay, during hotter periods, your 0, 0.18 will also then melt. Okay, because all of your water molecules will start to evaporate. So in this case, um, when you're looking at isotopic com composition of ice core, okay, if the ice core has a very very high percentage of O16 molecules, okay, when you write O16, it should look like this, huh? So it's O16 versus O18. So when it's got a very high high composition of O16, you will be able to tell that it was during the glacial period, whereby a lot of these lighter molecules were evaporated, and what was left behind was your O18 molecules, the heavier molecules. So these lighter molecules which evaporate, would you then after that condense and form ice sheets? Hence, they would be compressed, and when you extract it as an ice core, okay, you can actually see that there's a lot of O16 molecules that are present. Okay, next one would be your greenhouse gases. So usually the more the greenhouse gases, the warmer the climate, and the less the greenhouse gases, the colder the climate. Makes sense, right? Okay, because when there's a lot of greenhouse gases, it traps a lot of heat. It causes your climate to be much hotter. So actually when you extract this ice core, you'll be able to tell and see all these bubbles of air that are trapped, okay, as they are slowly being compressed, okay, because there will always be air bubbles. And these will kind of like prov provide these tiny time capsules of the atmosphere that happened over time. Okay, so over time, let's say you look at the ice core, let's say there's one huge bubble here, and then one small bubble, and then another big one, and then another big one, something like this, okay, as in, in an ice core. So from here, you'll be able to tell, okay, that during your glacial periods, right, it reflects the lowest level of greenhouse gases, your interglacial periods reflect the highest level. So it basically shows, give me a second. Okay, so it basically shows that things like this, with the big, big, huge bubbles, will show that it was during your interglacial periods. Okay, and suddenly when there's very, very little greenhouse gases, it shows that there's only, that it is the glacial period. Okay, so this is actually one of the, the better methods to use in extracting ice cores to test for climate change. Okay, the reason being is that these bubbles, right, when there are bigger bubbles, it shows that a lot of gas, a lot of hot gas was actually present. Okay, and these hot gases are just compressed, but they are not um, basically like extinguished. Okay, the bubbles still exist in there. Okay, but they are compressed and because they are so huge, and um, um, in such great amounts, okay, it shows that at that period, it was definitely a much warmer climate. Okay, because if in the ice core itself, there was already such a huge amount of greenhouse gases, how much more will it be outside in the actual at, um, atmosphere? Okay, as compared to the other hand, when you have got small little gas bubbles, um, greenhouse gas bubbles, okay, it shows that it was a colder climate because um, overall, if your ice core has got a very, very small bubble to begin with, it means that chances are in the whole atmosphere, there isn't a lot of greenhouse gas for this ice core to even trap inside the ice core itself in the first place. Okay, so we move on to your exam requirements. Very, very simple for this chapter. I just need to explain the various types of evidences that show that climate change exists. They tend to come out for smaller mark essays. All right, so you're just going to be looking at, one, your oceans and lakes. Okay, you're going to be looking at oceans and lakes. Okay, just sim simply explain... I would say just go for your Fora Minifera. Okay, this one is easier to uh, Minifera. Okay, as well as your isotopic records. And lastly, your pollen grains. Okay, I would say that pollen grains and Fora Minifera would likely be the easiest to actually explain. Okay, and next for your um, ice core, okay, would we'll just boil down to looking at greenhouse gases, which is easier, as well as your isotopic records okay i would think greenhouse gases is easier to explain and it's able to show better okay that there has been indeed um this this evidence that surrounds the fact that climate change has existed before okay so when it comes to this kind of questions take it easy um if you're not if you're still unsure okay leave a question in the comment section below i will answer it as soon as possible um if not that's actually all i have for this video okay the next part we'll be looking at how humans okay how you and i okay in in job we call it um, anthropogenic activities have actually affected climate change okay, in either a positive or a negative way. All right? So we'll look at that in the next video. Um, if you did enjoy this video, okay, be sure to give it a like. It does help me out a lot as well as to subscribe to the channel okay, so that I know you're at least enjoying the content. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.